You know, it sounds like to me, and just from the lawmakers that I've had, you know, here in the office uh, while I've been here, or those that I've just spoken with outside, that that there is a difference when, between the Senate and the House when it comes to property tax uh, relief. Do you see that being kind of where heads start butting uh, between the two? It could. I mean, in all fairness, we really have not gotten into those discussions in the House. Everything kind of has a rhythm. Everything kind of has, you know, in order. The House, um, we've uh, passed really two pieces of, you know, significant legislation. We have a couple more, you know, this week, and it's kind of getting warmed up. Uh, you know, there's been a third proposal about doing some sort of tax cut to the sales tax. Um, and so I don't know where the House is going to kind of come together as a body. I just know, you know, of the different variations, I've certainly signed on to the bill about the franchise tax. One thing that's, and you brought the franchise tax, and one thing that it does sound like a lot of Republicans are on board with is eliminating the franchise tax. That's something that has really been debated over the last few legislative sessions is, okay, time to get rid of it, time to get rid of it, but hasn't happened yet. This might be the session where it happens. Well, this is the session where there is... Uh, more money than we can spend under the over the spending cap and so if we're going to do tax cuts this is the session we're going to see it and i think there's a philosophical argument if we have more money than we need to fund government more money than we can spend or should spend it should go back to the taxpayer visiting with uh, representative dustin burrows here at the capitol there's been a lot of talk uh, in, in the press and then i believe there was a rally maybe yesterday uh, here about toll roads in texas and there, that Needs to be, we need to be done with toll roads. We need to be done here in Austin. You know, out of Lubbock, you don't see a lot of, you don't see any toll roads. Uh, but here, you're going to hit at least five toll roads, it seems, uh, if you're driving around. Where are we as far as toll roads go in the future of toll roads in Texas? Chad, I'll have, to, I'll have to let you know that debate has not come up. I know it's going to be debated in the committees. I do want to see kind of where the committees come back to. On the one hand, I understand that if you're already paying property taxes, they're funding part or allowed to do this. It is a bit offensive to actually have to pay a toll on that. But on the other hand, I do understand with some of the growth, it is a financing option that makes sense in certain circumstances. So it's probably going to be a situation where we have to look at it on a case-by-case -case basis. But I am interested in hearing the full committee debate this issue. You've got some town hall meetings coming up uh, do. pretty soon, don't you? I do. Where will you be traveling? Well, last weekend we did uh, Scurry County. This coming weekend uh, we're going to do Dane Gaines County at 8 a.m., Terry County at 10.15, Lubbock County at 1.30, Lynn County at 345 and Mitchell County at 7 o'clock. So next Saturday is a busy day for me. Yeah. You know, I do believe as a representative, my first job is to go out and get all of the feedback from the district. I can synthesize that so that I know what the priorities of our district are. And so the town halls is one mechanism by which I intend to you know, get that feedback. And next week is really important before we start taking the votes to figure out what are the priorities of this district. As I come back here and advocate for our district, what are our priority needs? And you know, is it tax cuts? Is it education? Is it transportation? And I do want the district to let me know how they feel so that I can better advocate for us. One of the things before I let you go that you know, I've been asking the numerous lawmakers about this is this whole debate about local control, uh, local control versus liberty. You've seen numerous bills that have been filed in the Senate and in the House. Uh, and, and as it's been described by those who uh, say we, we need to rein in some of the cities, there's a patchwork of laws. Uh, patchwork of ordinances out there. Where do you fall on this on this debate? Yeah, so if we're talking about the political spectrum, I don't think that it's a black or white issue that you should always be against or always for local control. I think you have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. I tend to think that we do have some city ordinances which are getting into uh, what should be a statewide issue. I'll give you an example, which is going to be the ride-sharing bill. A lot of people are calling it the Uber bill. And what you have is some municipalities have um, overemphasize what the ordinance should be for ride sharing. So for instance, in the Metroplex area, if Irving has a very stringent, highly regulated ride sharing agreement, it effectively sets the entire regulatory environment for an Uber or a Lyft or this new technology for the entire Metroplex. I don't think that's right. You know, I think it ought to be, especially when it comes to transportation and things like that, it needs to be a statewide level playing field and we shouldn't have this patchwork. So our office is going to take them by on a case-by-case -case basis. We're going to take a look at them. Um, but, you know, in instances where it comes to something that one municipality can be effectively setting the, you know, almost the statewide regulatory environment, that's not right. The state ought to jump in and have a level playing field for everyone. Texting while driving, uh, ban bills coming up this week, correct? Uh, where are you on that and where do you think that not only the House, but it made its way through the House and the Senate, uh, not last session, but the session beforehand, got to Governor Perry's desk, he vetoed it. Where, where do you think this bill ends up? 
Well, I think it's going to pass the House given what happened last time. Let me tell you my problems I have with this particular version of the bill. Number one, it does not deal with the patchwork of regulations, local uh, regulations that we just talked about. It says, okay, we'll have a baseline that statewide and any municipality wants to act something you know, greater than can do that. Well, I don't think that's right. I mean, if we're going to have a statewide texting while driving ban, you know, it needs to be the same rules. So as you travel from one municipality to another municipality, you know exactly what the law is. Uh, secondly, um, it requires you to actually pull off into the shoulder of a non-driving lane before you can text. I don't like that either. If you come to a complete stop, you know, in traffic because of either a car wreck or a traffic jam or a stoplight, I don't. I think you should have the right to basically text back and tell somebody you're running late. So I don't like the fact you have to pull over. Um, you know, I do believe texting while driving is a dangerous activity. I do believe it. You know has problems with your perception reaction time, which leads to accidents. The problem I have is I'm not so sure that a ban does anything to actually prevent crashes. And the reason being is if you keep, you know, if you have people who actually curtail their behavior, that's a good thing, but you may have an equal number of people who just try to hide their cellular device or use something different to actually still communicate, and they hold it at a lower angle or a lower uh, place to try to shield it from a police officer seeing into their windows, their perception reaction time is actually attenuated and might actually be more dangerous activity. So I've asked the author of the bill and some others to provide me some concrete evidence that a ban is actually going to make us a safer place before I'd be in favor of it, and I have yet to see that today. Real quick, we just had a drive-by caller who wanted to ask, uh, is there uh, anything out there right now that would try to cut inventory taxes? For businesses there is a bill that actually is i believe andrew chin button filed it we were actually going to file one uh like that i do think uh, that would be a good boom for the economy um, i could get behind an inventory tax bill all right state representative dustin burroughs appreciate your time today thank you thanks for stopping by